The sound and, and music on Dead Space, I think, are, are more important um, than, than they have been on, on any game, certainly, that I've worked on. It's not creepy unless there's a reason for it to be creepy. We're able to emphasize the fear and support it. And if it's this big, we can make it this big on the fear scale. We were really fortunate on this game that Glenn, Glenn realized early on, even though he didn't quite know what it was he, was he wanted, he knew that audio was really important. And so he's really made us a, a big part of it. We've done this before where we've turned off a scary movie, the, the picture, and just run the audio, and it's uh, you know, very scary. But if you turn off the audio and just watch the movie, it's not scary at all. So in our game, audio is just about everything. Audio and the visual have to be sort of married together. The way we make simple things scary is really not about the sound itself, it's about the situation. It's about why that sound happened, the timing, right? It's about what was the reason for that. And usually it's, I don't know what the reason was. And you're completely mystified. Why did that sound happen? And you look around and you, you know something's out there, but you don't know what. And it's that not knowing that makes you scared. I think one of the most unique audio elements of, of Dead Space is not necessarily the sounds we make. It's the control of the sounds we make. Well, the uh, fear emitters is something that Don came up with a long time ago. It was, a, it was sort of right at the very beginning of the game because we were trying to find a way that, uh, that was different than other games, that you could build up the fear, but also try and make it work with uh, interactive. What the fear emitter does, it just controls things. It can control the lighting, it can control anything. But what we do is we use it to control the music. And some, some of the problems with doing an interactive game is that, you know, you would have the sound building up, building up, building up, then you would stop. The player would stop. And you still have the build up. So with the fear emitters, what we were able to do is sort of have this uh, cone of influences, and the closer and closer you got to an enemy, um, the louder he would get, the more scary he would sound. And we wanted to create music that um, not only sort of guided the player towards the right path, but also was interactive. One of the things that's motivated us throughout the whole game is sort of reality and as much as close to reality as you can possibly get. And we know that you don't really hear much in space. Everything goes dead and we filter out almost everything. And what you hear is more of the heart pounding and, and your breathing. That's the main thrust of the sound. But when you're fighting a creature, you need to, if the guy's out there, you need to have some kind of, so the, the way we, we work it is that these are the sounds that are coming through, the, through the, the metal of the ship, through the boot, the grav boots, and into his helmet, right? So you can kind of hear a little bit, but nothing else. And that's, that's been a really big hit, because as soon as you open the door, we kind of change the palette, and then we change the sound, and you feel like you're in space. The way I tend to get the unique creature sounds is all about just experimenting. So the monsters in our game are, are sort of interesting in that they're all uh, sort of based from the human form. And the, the, the coolest thing I think about doing the creature voices is really first understanding what the creatures are about. One creature, it, it starts off looking kind of small and intimidating and I actually use baby sounds and children uh, yelling but you mix it in with other creatures and panthers and things like that, and what you come up with is something completely different. Don kept saying, Glenn, I got this sound for the bar, for the bar train. I've been riding it for years, and there's this horrible sound as I, I go under the bay in the tunnel, and um, I just want to use it. I'm like, all right, Don, go, yeah, go do it. So uh, he comes back, and it's this horrible sound, and uh, he puts it in this one part of the game where we have no action, no enemies, nothing, and all we're doing is blinking the light, and people just want to run out of that room. It's one of the, you know, greatest moments in the game, but nothing's happening but sound and light. And from then on, it just said, Don, 
you're going to run with this, you know. That was a great idea. So I was asking him the other day, do you got any more of those BART train ideas?